In this video, I want to introduce the concept of moving average processes, and then I'm going to provide some real life examples of processes which might follow a moving average process. So mathematically, a moving average process is, let's say, xt is equal to some sort of disturbance term et plus some constant theta times et minus 1. So this xt here is what we're modeling. So this is our moving average process. And each of these given error terms is iid with a mean of 0 and a variance of sigma squared. And we say that the process xt here is a moving average process of order 1. It's of order 1 because I've only got one lagged error term here in my process. A moving average of order 2 process would have also, as well as having the first lagged error, it would also have a term which had the second lagged error. OK, so this is our first example of a time series process. What are some particular examples? of MA1 processes. So the first example which I want to talk about might be the example whereby we were talking about the change in demand for lemonade at time t, where t here is, let's say we're talking about daily data. So we might say that the change in demand for lemonade was equal to some sort of error term et, or epsilon t, which I'm going to define in a minute, minus 0.5 times this epsilon in the last period. So what actually might represent this epsilon term here in the example of demand for lemonade? Well, epsilon here might actually represent the change in temperature. So we've got that epsilon t is equal to the change in temperature at time t. So if we have that the change in temperature at time t is greater than zero, we have that epsilon is greater than zero, which, because of the way in which we've defined our process here, means that, well, assuming that the change in temperature in the last period was zero, that means that we're going to have that there's going to be an increase in demand for lemonade. So there's going to be delta lemonade at time t is going to be greater than zero. OK, so that kind of makes sense. But what about this sort of minus term here, which is going to affect the, chain, the demand for lemonade in the next period? Well, the idea is, let's say we assume that the change in temperature in the next period is actually zero. So there's no change in temperature in the next period. What's going to happen to the demand for lemonade? Well, this above model suggests that the change in lemonade demand at time t plus 1 is actually going to be equal to minus 0.5 times the change in lemonade demand at time t. So actually there's going to be a decrease in lemonade demand relative to yesterday. Why might that be the case? Well, it might be the case because of the fact that since people have bought lemonade yesterday, they don't necessarily need to buy it today because they've still perhaps got half of the lemonade which they bought less yesterday, still left over today. So perhaps they drink sort of half a bottle per day. So because they've got this lemonade left over from yesterday, even though the temperature is still high, there's not going to be a increase in demand for lemonade. There's actually going to be a fall because people don't need to go out and buy more lemonade today because they've still got some left over from yesterday. So that's an example of a moving average of order one process. Note that if we were dealing with processes which perhaps were, well, were dealing with goods rather that had a higher shelf life, perhaps we would have other terms in here. So we might have further lags in here. We might have 0.25 times the error at time t minus 2 because perhaps the good which we might be talking about lasts for two days opposed to just one day. So that's how we could generalize this example to sort of higher order moving average processes. So that's the first example I wanted to talk about. The second example which I wanted to talk about was, let's say we were modelling the change in oil price at time t. And we said that the change in oil price at time t was equal to some error, which I'm going to define in a minute, at time t, plus 0.5 times some sort of error in the last period. And note here that we've got this plus relative to the lemonade example where we had a minus. 
So what might this error term actually represent in this circumstance? Well, the error term in the example which I'm giving here is actually going to represent a, well, whether a typhoon or a hurricane occurs out at sea. So how does this actually go about working? So the idea is, let's say at time t, there is a hurricane. So although I haven't qualified exactly or quantified exactly what this variable means, I'm going to assume that that means that et is greater than zero. And because of that, and because of the fact that we're assuming that there wasn't a hurricane in period t minus one, that means that the change in oil price at time t is going to be greater than zero. So there's going to be an increase in oil price at that time. And that makes intrinsic sense because of the fact that perhaps this hurricane disrupts the supply chain for tankers which are transporting oil around the world. So there's an increase in that period in the oil price. Okay, what about the next period? So if we assume that in the next period, perhaps next week, that there is no hurricane, so E T plus one equals zero. Well, why might it still be the case that there is an increase in oil price? Because we've still got this plus 0.5 times the error in the last period. Well, it might be the case that the supply is still recovering from the last period, so it's still not back to what it was before. So the change in oil price at period T plus one is also greater than zero because supply is still not back to what it was originally. But notice that in the next period, because we're assuming that there's no typhoon, typhoon still, and because in the last period there was no typhoon, the change in oil price in the next period is just gonna be zero. So perhaps oil has now settled at a higher price level um, and there is no change in oil price in the period T plus two. So notice that in a moving average process, the effect of an error is to propagate in two periods. It's gonna have an effect in the period in which it happens, and then it's gonna have an effect in the period after that on our given process. So in the lemonade example, the effect of having an increase in temperature was to increase lemonade demand in that period, but to decrease it relative to what it was in the last period in the next period. And after that, assuming that there was no change in temperature, the lemonade demand would be relatively constant. Whereas for oil prices, the effect was if we had a hurricane in this period, then that increased oil prices in this period, but it also led to an increase in oil prices in the next period. But after that, because supply has recovered, there might actually just be a stabilization of oil prices. There's no further increase in oil prices. They're not necessarily the most realistic examples, but they're a way of introducing the concept of a moving average process.